This is Apollo. We put the other two dogs out back for this uh, purpose of this video. We're going to go over some uh, control uh, techniques and exercises in this video. I'm going to show you how you can teach your dog to drop, as well as how to do the leave it exercise. If we have enough time, I'm going to show you how to teach your dog to stay. So Apollo uh, likes to steal socks and some other things. The other two, and he also, when he's, he's kind of the anti-fetcher. The other two dogs like to fetch. When we throw the ball for him, he steals the ball and then won't give it up to anybody. Now, a lot of this uh, probably came from because we pulled things out of his mouth. And that creates the desire that something is a higher value than it actually is. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to, as you see, I'm, I want him to be interested. So I'm going to tease him with a little bit. There we go. Now, before we do this, I want to have a high value training treat. I have chicken liver here. And so I want him to be able to get it. Drop. Drop. Well, that's, that was on you, buddy. Uh, so anytime you give a treat, the treat should go in the dog's mouth first, and they should hear the command word immediately after. All right, so we're going to try to do this again. So even though I have a really high value treat and he can smell it, he's still really interested in the ball. Drop. If I go for the object or try to take it from him, that will make it a high value item and that will make him less inclined to want to do this. So let's do this one more time. Let's do it from the side so they can give you a little bit better camera presence. I'm prepping to be on a, on a TV show anyway, so this is good <laughs> practice for me. Drop. See how much faster it was that time. So what you want to do is, is find low value items. This is a low value item because he's allowed to have it at any point in time. Same thing with this. If I have a sock or a shoe, that's a high value item. If I run away from the human, they'll chase me with this item. And that's what we train our dogs to do instead of actually teaching them to drop. So for him, I would, when he has these low value items, go ahead and hold the treat. Literally touch his nose and just hold it here. Wait for him to drop it. Don't tell him to drop. But after he does, don't go for the object. Just put it in his mouth and say the word drop. And so he's like, so when a human asks me to drop, I drop the stuff in my mouth, I get an amazing treat, and then I get my stuff back 99% of the time? Heck yeah. Now, if he does have something and he's not allowed to have a shoe, some underwear, something like that, get like a bully stick or some cod skin or a kneecap or something that's a equal or greater value. So when we drop it and he drops it, we give him the treat, and then we give him the other item, and then we take the high value item, or the item that's not allowed away. So he doesn't look at that as the forbidden fruit. Uh, you want to practice this, like I said, with low value items. So you can try to practice this kind of whenever the dog has something. But don't do it. We have two other dogs in the house. Don't do it with the other dog's present because he will not want to drop it because they'll take his stuff. And so by holding on to it, I have more status. And also don't encourage him by telling him to do it over and over again. Just hold it there and let him make the decision on his own. Okay, now when I'm playing fetch, I actually, uh, we'll see if we can actually do it here. The camera's just gonna stay on me so you won't see him, but I'm gonna see if we can actually get him to play fetch because normally he takes the ball and he runs away. So again, I wanna prime by getting him used to it. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna say fetch three times. As I throw it, I'm gonna say fetch. When he picks it up with his mouth, I'm gonna say fetch. And then I'm gonna have a treat out. And when I pop the treat in his mouth the third time, I'm gonna say fetch. Are you ready? Fetch. So now I'm grabbing the treat, fetch. Fetch, and then I can pick up the ball. Now, don't ever snatch. If I have, if I snatch it, that implies that I don't think that I have the confidence that it's mine. So when I pick it up, I just pick it up very casual. Sit, fetch, fetch. Sorry about the floor. Yeah, it's okay. Fetch. If you do this with him enough, he'll just come over and he'll start spinning the ball out at you. And right there, he got the ball again, and he gets to go and do his thing. That's what he's programmed to do in his brain, because this is the old habit. But eventually, he'll learn not to do this. And he'll just spit it out. Drop. Now, I do the drop separately for fetch. You notice I'm saying drop when he drops it. I'm saying fetch when he brings the ball back, because the fetch is actually a combination of three or four other things. Okay, so now we're going to see if I can hide this and get you to be interested, not interested in it. You have object permanence as a dog, so I'll see what I can do. There we go. So I'm putting just behind my leg so he can't see it. Now he's looking, he has, he has, he has, you can see he's, where I have object permanence, I know it's around here somewhere. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna show you now uh, how to teach our dog to leave it. First thing I do is I have one treat in my hand, I'm gonna hold it with a loose hand and let him sniff it. Usually they'll molest your hand, whoops, a little bit more than he did. Let's try that again, sit. Leave it. His underbite is getting him. <laughs> uh, what I'm basically saying is when you try to take it from the human, you're, you're not going to win. 
Usually they'll really molest your hand. That's a little bit more typical. There we go. I'm waiting for him to stop of his own volition. When he does, it moves away. And I'm not, again, not inclining, not giving him any indication to do it whatsoever. I'm just creating a stage situation. Leave it. So um, this is the first stage. Leave it. So when he, as soon as he backs away, then I'm giving him the treat. The guardians are going to do this off camera when we get done. I want to kind of go through it so they can watch this later on. So that's the first one. Now, dog's eyes are very good for movement. They're not very good for detail or for color. That's why if you're walking your dog and you see a rabbit frozen there, you're like, that rabbit's brave. No, the rabbit realizes as long as I stay still, the dog can't see me. So when I do the second one, I actually drop it and then I cage it. I'm waiting for him to back off. Leave it. Now he does not get the one that's on the floor. He just gets a second one. Um, so the whole point of this is to leave things alone and then get a reward elsewhere. Now you see now I'm able to pick it up and I don't have to have it caged the whole time. Leave it. And always pick it up. Don't let him get it because that will train him to steal it. Leave it. Now what I want to do is I want to bat, gradually build in more and more delays, longer and longer delays, excuse me, um, until eventually where he can leave, you, you just drop it, you don't have to cage it at all. But each dog's going to be a little bit different on their rate of speed for this. Now once you've gotten to that point where you can drop it like this, he's not quite there yet. You see he's still challenging. Leave it. Um, but eventually you'll be able to drop it and he won't go for it at all. The next stage that I do is I actually arrange, like I go, I do a lot of service dog training. So I take a dog to like Lowe's or Home Depot and I have one of my apprentices go down the aisle ahead of me and drop like a whole bunch of treats down the aisle. Then we walk down the aisle. Now as we pass each one, we're first doing is the dog's looking at it. It's like, oh, I'm going to get that. You say, leave it. He looks up at you and you have a treat. You start going towards him. So he walks over it and then you give him a treat after it. So you're treating him after not taking the item to begin with. Um, and then after a while, then he has to look and just ignore all the treats on the aisle. And then at the end of the aisle, he gets a reward. So this is really helpful if your dog wants to steal, uh, you know, somebody left a cheeseburger or something on the street and you don't want to get those icky stuff. Coming up with a strong leave it exercise in this sort of capacity when it's in that classroom environment, he can learn to develop that skill set is a great way to do it. A lot of people say leave it and they're jerking the dog's leash, but they haven't actually taught it to leave it. And so now leave it just means the human's going to try to break my neck. I don't like that and I don't learn anything from that. I'm going to still try to take the item. All right. The last thing we're going to go over is another control exercise. This is like a bonus uh, of teaching a dog how to stay. Now most people ask, have you taught your dog to stay? They're like, kind of. Stay. Stay, stay, that's not a stay. Stay is binary, either your dog stays or it doesn't. So um, I teach the stay for the three Ds. First for duration, then for distance, then for distraction. Most of us try to do it with all three. So the first one I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna switch, put this on the other side, and you're gonna get a bunch of, ah, you know, I guess you don't, I forgot, you know, I haven't taught you to stay yet. And you definitely can't stick your nose in the treat period, but I give you points for trying. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a handful of treats in my hand ready to go. I'm a right-handed person, so I'm going to give them a, a, a stay with my left hand. I'm going to put the treats behind me, but I'm going to keep it one in this hand ready like this so I can deliver it right away. So I'm just going to go by threes. Stay. Put my hand on my chest and I count to three in my brain. And then when I get done, I give them the treat and say stay. Then I get my hand ready, so now I'm ready to do this again. Now I'm going to go to six. Stay. Stay. Next one, nine. Stay. Stay. Now when I get done, I want to give each dog a unique release word because we have three dogs in this house. So I say break, freedom, release, and parole. I have four dogs. Again, <laughs> I like fun command words. So do you have a preference for any of those words? How about parole? You can change it later if you want. Okay, so when I get done, I'm going to practice three times, 12 times, however many times I want to do that. When I get done, I'm going to throw it to the side and say parole or break or freedom or whatever it is. Now, when we're doing this, we want to keep practicing this in short micro sessions until we can get him to stay here for five minutes. But if, let's say I'm going by, I go by threes this time, then, then fours, then fives, and I go by tens the next time, and I go from five to ten, and it's nine, he starts looking around. 
well, then I back up on the next iteration. You cannot have the ball, buddy. Um, and uh, he's like, you want to bet? I know where it is now. Um, but then uh, he's got it. Uh, but then the next iteration, I want to practice a little bit harder. Uh, what are you doing back there? Oh, is this his, his paw? Okay, I was going to say, I could feel something underneath, and it did not feel like his head. Um, so basically, the idea is we're going to gradually elongate and help until he can stay for five minutes with us in front of us before we start moving for distance. Now, when I do distance, you know, let's do this again. There we go. All right, let's see if I can do this. We'll tuck this in. So, um, sit. So I'm going to give him the stop sign, stay, stay, one, two, and I'm going to count my brain, one, two, three, four, and come back, stay. Now, he, you saw it right there, he went from a sit to a, a stand. The book says the dog can do that as long as it stays in the position. My personal preference, if I put you in a sit, stay, I want you to stay seated. But don't fight the storm. If your dog is, it keeps on going down to a down position, start it off in a down position. Just start with what's ever easier. So my, uh, when I start moving for distance, I, that's my, what I showed you is my initial uh, calculation. I move two steps away and I count to four and then I come back to two steps. Don't do, let the dog come to you because that's what we call an auto release. I want the dog to stay until he hears that release word. This is why we throw the last one off to the side. So once I can start doing it for distance, at first just do, you want to do as easy as possible. One step, count to two, come back, stay. Then maybe two steps, count to four, come back, stay. Three steps, count to six. That's where I start, but every dog's gonna be a little bit unique. So sit, sit. Let's say we're at distance, and he probably won't do it here, so I'm just gonna hand to him. Let's say that he's like over there, I sit, stay, and I'm taking the steps back, and I've gotten to the point where I can be at least 15 feet away from him. Well, he's over there, so if I go a step like this, he now cannot see me, even though the camera can. So I'm not only gonna stay out of his line of sight for one second, then I'm gonna come back here, then I go back to him, give him a treat and say stay. Then I back up again and go out this time for two seconds. So when I, I want to first get to about 10 to 15 feet away while he can still see me as we're practicing this. Then I want to start moving around the corner or around an object so he can't see me. This is why it's, it doesn't matter in the first stage if he's looking at you or not because eventually we're going to practice to stay when we're leaving the room. Um, and so you want to keep on practicing this until you can stay out of sight for up to five minutes with him not, not moving. Now again, always back up. Now if you can, I don't see one in here, but a lot of people have security cameras. Oh, I see one right there. So don't break in this house. Uh, so basically, if there's a security camera you can watch on your phone, then you can actually go around the corner, you can look at your phone or have your iPad around the corner and watch. So the dog starts getting up, you know I'm pushed too far too fast. So the first one is for, first for duration, then we need to do for distance, then we're going to do for distraction. So if he's reactive to other dogs, we might actually play an episode of the Dog Whisperer on the TV show. Maybe it'll be my show. <laughs> um, or, uh, you know, 101 Dalmatians or something like that. Or we do it when there's dogs and people walking by, and we do it right in front of the front door. So we, we want to gradually work him back into the point where he can actually do the most distractions. Sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to spook you. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, but I, uh, my dog that I trained as a service dog, I take him to the grocery store, I put him in a stay, and then I go in the produce aisle and I get a bunch of produce stuff so I can see him at first, and now I'm outside of his line of sight, and people walk in the store and they're like, there's a weird dog just sitting right there. But we're practicing and helping him do this for real world situations. Um, now for the stay is one of the few exercises where we're gonna go longer than uh, a couple minutes. Typically for training, you wanna keep it one, two, three minutes maximum for each training session. The best uh, uh, formula is to do a whole bunch of little training sessions sprinkled throughout the day. And also do them in different locations. Don't always practice right here. Otherwise, he'll be able to do the activity right here, but you move right over there and he won't be able to do it. So for the uh, drop it, for the fetch, or for the stay exercise, we wanna practice this throughout the room. You're doing a great job of staying. I'll, I'll reward you with that. Stay, I'm gonna give you one more. Break. So remember, after you're doing this, after each time, whether it's distance or whatever, make sure you give that command word. Now, first, by the time you get to the five minutes, you should be able to just say break without having to throw the treat inside. We just do that to teach him to do that. Okay, what do you think, Apollo? Where are you going? Sit. This is how I get a dog to sit. Sit. These are some tips and tricks that you can use to teach your dog to drop it, leave it, and uh, fetch, and stay. <laughs>